Dune Part 1 by Denis Villeneuve can be said to be one of the most remarkable and most watched films of 2021, especially for those who love science fiction. Playing the role of a film that introduces characters and builds the world, Dune Part 1 did a pretty good job. However, because the universe of Dune is very complex and complicated, there are many details that the film cannot say more. If you have watched Dune and find it difficult to understand the details of the film, this will be the video for you. In the context of this video, the film will explain some details that we believe many of you are curious about. First of all, I'm sure many of you are wondering why in a faraway future with advanced technology, people still use melee weapons. The reason is that in the universe of Dune, there is a protective device called a whiteboard. It is formed from a machine created from the energy field surrounding the object. People can use this energy field as a personal whiteboard or as a large whiteboard, depending on the size of the machine. This energy field reduces the speed of the object touching it, and it can slow down small objects to the point of death. Long-range weapons usually slow down their bullets when they hit the target, making it very easy to dodge. Therefore, the best way is to use melee weapons such as axes, swords, or knives. Attackers who hit the targets can continuously provide power to the weapon to pass through the energy field and hit the target. Or, if you use a long-range weapon such as a shotgun or a rifle, the best way is to shoot before the enemy has time to hit the target. Otherwise, aim at the dead corner to make it difficult to dodge the bullet. In the universe of Dune, of course, there are also laser guns, but they are less commonly used. The reason is that when you shoot a laser beam into the core, no one can know what will happen. The core may be destroyed and the target explodes. There may also be a reaction between the energy field and the bullet, causing a counterattack with the source. At that time, both sides will be destroyed. It is scary that no one can predict what the result of this shot will be, so almost no one dares to use a laser gun to deal with the target. And weapons of greater destructive power, such as atomic weapons, are no longer used for political reasons. Therefore, my favorite way to fight in the Dune universe is to fight close to the battlefield and use cold weapons. The main villain in Dune is Vladimir Hakonin, the leader of the Hakonin clan and the Jedi Prime. Until the beginning of the Dunes, in the year 10191, the Hakonin family still held Arrakis for 80 years. As you know, Arrakis is the only place that produces incense. The substance has the most important role in the underground of the universe. One decagram of this substance is worth 620,000 solari. Therefore, with the discovery of the incense text, the improvement of Hakonin's silver is not insignificant. As for the relationship between the Hakonins and Atreides, you can simply understand that they are enemies who don't want to play together. The bond between the two clans originated 10,000 years ago and continues to this day. In contrast to Vladimir Hakonin, it is always about how to control the race in general and how to control the supply chain in particular. Vladimir Hakonin's desire was to destroy the Atreides, not only because of his enemies, but also because of the reputation of the Lithuanian nobility. Although the Hakonins had become extremely rich by staying in Arrakis, their reputation was very bad, almost not respected by other clans. Meanwhile, the Atreides and the Lithuanian nobility were very respected and respected. People called him the Lithuanian Duke, and their status was getting higher and higher. This made the Emperor worried, afraid that the Lithuanian formula could harm his power. He began to want to cut off the Atreides clan. And so, the Emperor and Namtuk secretly cooperated with each other to devise a plan to destroy the family in trades. First, the Emperor will find a way to get Arrakis out of the hands of the Harkonnen clan. The reason he gave was because Harkonnen's rule was too fierce, and the mineral production may be reduced. So to end the conflict with the indigenous people in Arrakis, the Emperor asked the clan of Atreides to take over the planet. This is a direct decree, so the trades can't deny it, even though they know it's a trap. The Emperor is still the most powerful ruler, and if he publicly denies it, the trades will have to face the Emperor's army of warlords and tyrants, the Kar army. There is no clan that can fight against the Sadao Kar army alone, nor is there any clan that dares to help the Dreddies if they are against the Emperor. Therefore, there is no other way but to obey orders and prepare to take over Arrakis. But why is it so? Why didn't Namtuek and the Emperor directly attack the Atreides tribe, but force them to come to Arrakis? The reason is that the political situation does not allow such a large-scale attack without a justified reason. If the Atreides tribe was attacked in Arrakis, Namtuek could use the unsatisfactory excuse of having to give this planet back to the enemy or for whatever reason he likes. 
In addition, the Atreides' military power in Arrakis will be much less. If they directly attack their homeland, Tuek Li, To will have enough strength to resist and will have a reason to gather the tribes and launch a rebellion to overthrow the Emperor. The execution of the attack on Arrakis will be much safer because this planet has no satellites to track. Other tribes will be confused about the reality and no one will know that the Emperor is involved in this plot. Leto knew full well that there was a trap waiting for him on Arrakis. This was a sign that the Emperor could not pass him by. He knew that the Harkonnens would attack him and the Saruka army would be there. Therefore, Leto had to find a way to deal with it. Leaving Arrakis was impossible, as mentioned above. He also knew that his forces were much thinner. Leto had devised a plan to ally with the Fremen because he heard that they were brave and brave warriors. He planned to form a Fremen army to fight the Harkonnens. However, the attack was much worse than he had predicted, and the treacherous actions of Dr. Yuo were also outside the expectations of the Atreides family. That led to the failure of the Atreides family and the death of the Leto family. But his family's hope is still there because his son Leto is Paul at trades and his mother is Jessica, and they were able to escape. In Dune, we can see that Pau has seen and dreamed of many scenes, even before coming to Arrakis. Maybe you will ask the question, why is she able to do this? And what do the scenes Pau sees mean? We will answer the first question, why is Paul capable of doing that? Part of the reason comes from the fact that his mother, Jessica, was a nun of the Bene Gesserit society. This nun followed the political principles of the empire through the paths of marriage, inheritance, and religion. For centuries, this society has sent its members to marry families, from there to control many good genes, continue to select to be able to create a perfect gene. Powett Trades is a person with such a good gene model who has been selected for hundreds of years, so his bloodline itself has a lot of potential. Another reason is that since childhood, Pau was trained by his mother on the path of Bene Gesserit, so he also has the, the ability to be like his mother. The key point in the training of Bene Gesserit is to open his mind, and when combined with the power already available in Pau's gene code, he has the ability to see, that is, he can see the circumstances. Pau's vision of the future is that he can see many possibilities of what will happen in the future. While on the planet Caladon, this ability has not been fully awakened. But when Pau goes to Arrakis and comes in contact with a large amount of fumes in the air, his ability becomes stronger than ever. We can divide the scenes that Paul saw first and after he arrived in Arrakis. Before coming to Arrakis, Paul had some stories about a girl in Arrakis. This girl's name is Chani. She's a freeman, and she'll be an important person in Paul's life in the future. Then when talking to Duncan Idaho, he told him about the stories about forming an alliance with the Freeman. Paul also saw the death of Duncan Idaho, and this scene foretold the sacrifice of the soldiers when he later held the enemy's feet to help Paul and Jessica escape. And in the test with the mother of Gaius, Helen Mohiem, Paul saw the scenes of destruction, blood, and a blade. These scenes foretell the attack of the Harkonnen clan and the challenges that Paul has to face when he finds Freeman. After arriving in Arrakis and for the first time going to the desert, Pau received a large amount of smoke in the air, and they awakened his clairvoyance. Now you can see the possibilities of the future. You can see more than one future. The obstacles you can encounter, can you? Thanks to these scenes, you know your mother is pregnant, and then she will become a mother of Fremen. Paul also saw the scenes of his death and continued to see images of Johnny and the bloody phallus knife. When he hid in a tent in the middle of the desert after escaping from the Harkonnen army, Paul continued to receive a large amount of radiation in the air. Now, the scenes that you see are about a war. This scene implies that if Paul continues to find the Fremen, his actions may lead to a global war. Fremen will swat the When he was stuck in the sandstorm, Paul saw the scenes of another friend man with a pair of boots. This man later appeared in the group of friend men that Paul and his mother hated. His name is James, and he was the only one who did not accept Paul and Jessica to go with him. Because of that, Paul fought Jameis, and the weapon he used was a phalanx, just like the scenes you've seen before. The 
blade is a sacred weapon, made from the teeth of a dead wolf, and combined with the image of a pair of chains in the scene. They point to the fact that Pao will later learn how to cut the wolf, a job that any framer can do. In addition to the practical skills and abilities that are approved in the practice process of Bennett Gesserit, Paul Atreides also has some other abilities. Because he is a descendant of the Atreides family since childhood, Paul has been trained and trained in many areas by his father's talented subordinates. Drushter Due, Duncan Idaho, Gunny Harlech, and Tuffer Howard are all their people, so they have taught Paul many things. Therefore, although he is only 15 years old, he has a considerable amount of knowledge about history, politics, and is a rather mature person. Pao was a strong swordsman when he learned how to fight from strong warriors like Duncan Idaho and Garnet Horlick. Along with that, he also exposed the talent of a mentat with his excellent use of his brain. All these abilities will help a lot in Pao's family revival journey. Throughout the film, we can see that Leto in Trades has mentioned many times about forming an alliance with the Fremen. And after the Trade family collapsed, Paul immediately thought of this. According to Leto's perspective, the key to maintaining the power of the Arrakis sisters lies in the Fremen. He calls it the desert power. And when it's Paul's turn, he has to find a way to take over this power to avenge the family. Paul realized that the Bene Gesserit Association had once told a story about a way to save the Fremen. Taking advantage of this superstition, Fao can play a godly role and make the strong desert warriors his subordinates. Chani in particular, and the Freeman in general, is the way to help Fao revive his family in trades. However, as Pao can see in the previous scenes, becoming a lifesaver of the Freeman may lead to a terrible battle. According to Pao, the Freeman will rise to the top of the Atreides clan and wipe out the entire universe. Jessica knew this, and she thought about getting Paul to run away from Arrakis, but he refused. And the film ended with Paul choosing to follow the Freeman, that is, to choose the violent path. I understand the risks of this choice, but it is the only way to restore the family, to pay the debt. Denis Villeneuve chose to end the film in this scene to say that Paul has chosen his own path. He has chosen to turn himself into the statue of the Fremen, choosing to become Kiwat Haderach that the Bene Gesserit Association is looking for. You are no longer a young Paul. Now you have become a Paul, the head of the family in trades. You have found the way for yourself and accepted the painful price of that journey. That's the explanation of the film about Dune. I hope after watching the video, you will be able to understand more about the film as well as Dune's universe, which is expected to be much more explosive in part two. If there is a path that the young volunteers have chosen, what will it lead you to? The answer will be on the first day of March, 2024. The judges are not regretting the compliments for this story, so don't miss it. And now, goodbye and see you again. May the force be with you. I'm gonna make him an offer again. Play as time goes by. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>